the countries that consumed all those commodities will be having a slowdown. Well, yeah, we're that. having a cyclical slowdown. Yes, we're having the world's in recession. I mean, watch Bloomberg if you don't, if you're not aware of that. The world's certainly in recession, and there is having a cyclical slowdown. But as secular, the secular supply is being damaged even more. You're not going to be able to get any. Farmers cannot get loans to expand. Nobody's going to give you money to open a zinc mine in the next decade. So when we come out of this cyclical decline, you're going to have even less supply, and the bull market in commodities is going to resume, and that will be the best place to have money. Now, one of the best places to have money in the commodity markets of late has, of course, been gold, a safe haven, etc. Is that partly where you're putting your money? Well, no, I have gold. If gold goes down, I'll buy more. If it goes up, I'll buy more. No, no, if gold is in a bull market, which has got years to go. But every, I expect to make more money in agriculture, Nina, than I do in gold, but I own it. bought some yesterday, as a matter of fact. So you're still buying gold. Let's talk about the policymakers' response to exactly what's going on. A lot of people saying perhaps they're getting a little bit further ahead on the curve now. Do you agree with that or not? There's been a lot of talk about people being behind the curve for a long time here. Nina, the reason we're having these problems is because these guys don't know what they're doing. If I came to your show every week, 100 weeks in a row, and I was wrong every week, you'd probably stop having me. After eight weeks, you'd say, get that guy out of here. After 18 weeks, I'd say, I never want to see him again. Paulson, Bernanke, the, the idiot at the New York Fed, Tim Greitner, whatever his name is, these guys are never right. Why do people listen to them? Why would you go for them? They're the ones making it worse. They're the ones making mistakes. The, the depression in the 30s started out as a stock market bubble, which popped. Then it turned into a slight recession. Policymakers made mistake after mistake after mistake, and we had the Great Depression. We've got a bunch of people now who may turn this into the Great Depression. Now, that's exactly what I was coming to. With your kind of investment foresight, do you think that maybe it is as bad as the Great Depression, worse than the Great Depression? Already people like the finance minister of Finland and other nations say we could have three years' worth of recession on this side of the Atlantic. Is it the same on your side The, the Japanese Atlantic? have, a, remember the lost decade of the 1990s in Japan because they would not let anybody fail. They kept propping up zombie banks and zombie companies. It's 18 years later in Japan and they're still paying the price because they wouldn't let people fail. I hope we don't have 18 years in the U.S., but the U.S. is trying to say there's no problem, nobody's going to lose your job, nobody's going to lose any money. That's insane. We had the worst period of credit excess in world history. Somebody's got to feel some pain. Now, if credit excess has been the problem, would bringing rates down to about 1% be the solution that some people have been advocating? Uh, Probably not. Absolutely not. You've got to let people fail. That's the problem right now. Nobody knows what the assets are. I wouldn't lend you money, Nina, if I didn't know what your assets were. If you showed me something and said, these are my assets, and I knew they were false, I wouldn't lend you any money, and you wouldn't either. You've got to let people fail. Then the courts take over the people who are bad, and you can know you can lend money to them. Then you have the system start over again. Look, in, 19, in the late 90s, South Korea did it, cleaned out the system with horrible pain, and became the most rapidly, one of the rapidly growing countries in the world for the next 10 years. Russia did it, America did it in 1920, Turkey did it in 2000. This is what has always worked. Propping people up has never worked in the history of the world. I'm not giving you philosophy or politics or Democrats or Republicans. I'm telling you what has worked in history and what has not worked in history. Okay, then how many more banks could go to the wall? Lots. If in America, we have nine or 10,000 banks. What's the way the system is supposed to work? When people get in trouble, the people who are competent, the people who didn't make bad loans, take the assets from the incompetent, and then the system starts over. What we're doing now, we're taking the assets from the good people, from the competent people, giving them to the incompetent people, and saying, okay, incompetent people, now you can compete with the competent people with their money. The way it's supposed to work, the competent people are supposed to be taking market share now from the incompetent people and starting over. I mean, this is bad economic, it's bad morality, first of all, but, but politicians don't care about morality. It's terrible economics. Let me an anecdote of my own. Just earlier on today, an investor emailed me to say, God save us when we saw those markets opening down 7%. How much panic is there in the market? Well, there's not enough. I mean, I wish there were. I wish the market were down 20% in a day. Then we would know it's the bottom. Then we would know there'd be things going wrong. As far as gold, I mean, you know, I, I, I bought some gold. I, I mean, I, I got my gold. You know, I bought a couple here. Show us again, absolutely. No, it's, real, it's the real stuff. It's well, real you know gold. what, Mr. Rogers, you're lucky to have that because throughout the course of this show, an investor just emailed me and said, for instance, the sandwich person around the corner from him that runs his sandwich shop tried to go and buy gold bullying yesterday in the city of London and couldn't. 
Well, I got this in Zurich yesterday, so maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Uh, I know that there's been a run on gold coins all over the world, and people are running out of them. That may, that may just be that the public, you know, the odd lotters, are sometimes the last ones in. So what would be the striking opportunity in terms of market investments going forward? If there's one particular thing you could look for, say, three years from now that would make you money, something catching your eye. I'm going to make a lot more money in agriculture than I am in gold or any stocks on the, on the board. I know that there's a gigantic the inventories of food are the lowest they've been in 50 years. Pe farmers cannot produce anymore. There's a shortage of tractors, tractor tires, seed, fertilizer. You know, all the farmers in the world are old men. Nobody's become a farmer in the last 30 years. We have a shortage of farmers now. Everybody you know became a lawyer or an investment banker or a journalist. Well, then they you know. become journalists. <laughs> yeah, what we should all do is go and become farmers. All these stockbrokers are about to lose their jobs. They better learn how to drive taxis. But what they better learn how to do is drive tractors because that's the future. So are you talking about investing in some of the commodities themselves, talking about investing in ETFs that buy a whole swathe of these commodities or crucially some of these companies that farm and produce some of these agricultural commodities? If you're good at it, you should buy the commodities themselves. If you're not, you should buy an index or you can buy companies. But the studies show you would have made 300% more investing in commodities themselves rather than commodity stock. But if you're a good stock picker, have at it. You'll make a lot of money. Let's ask Jim Rogers for his reaction to that plan to buy stakes in regional U.S. banks. You know, this is absurd. There are 9,000 banks. Who's going to decide which banks Mr. Paulson takes his money to? That's not the way the system is supposed to work. Was he going to buy out my losing positions? And Mr. Paulson, I've got some stocks that have gone down. Would you buy them for me? That's not going to solve the problem. If you go to the banks, and they all have phony bookkeeping right now, I wouldn't lend money to a guy with phony bookkeeping, and you wouldn't either. Just because Mr. Paulson gives him some money, this is not going to solve the problem. you said that before. In fact, we've also had a number of sort of former Bank of England policymakers on this very show saying you just throw money at the problem until it goes away. It doesn't seem to be the issue, is it? You know, that's called massive inflation. We're going to have an inflationary nightmare throughout history. Throughout history, whenever people have printed a lot of money, six months later, or a year later, two years later, you have terrible inflation. These guys all over the world are printing gigantic amounts of money, and we're going to have an inflationary nightmare. May I repeat again? May I urge you to buy some agricultural products? We've heard how Europe has uh, traded, but in the United States, things going from bad to worse, as we were just saying before. When will the Fed and other central banks start printing money? They're going to have to do it. Well, they're already printing money. They need to be attentive. Be attentive. They're going to cut rates some more. They're going to cut interest rates some more. I own short-term government bonds. I plan to sell my short-term government bonds when this happens and go short more long-term government bonds. This is insane. But this is great for commodities down the road. Massive inflation is coming, and the only way you protect yourself is to be out of paper assets and into real assets. It has been quite interesting how all of this has sort of culminated with the run-up to the U.S. election. It seems as though President George W. Bush seeming like a bit of a lame duck, really. And then again, even Ben Bernanke contradicting him twice this week. Well, listen, I don't take my advice from George Bush or Ben Bernanke. Neither one of them knows what's going on. No, no, that's not where you get your advice. You'll go broke if you get advice from the American go any government, but especially the American government. Don't pay attention to them. I guess you have to because you're a journalist, but I don't. All right, then. Let's take a look at exactly what the Fed could do. I mean, what are you expecting? Rates to come down to 1%? Is that the answer? Uh, it's not on the show? answer. No, no, no. That's not the answer. Well, what that's would what you like to see do. them doing at the moment? Well, I'd abolish the Federal Reserve and resign. The Federal Reserve is causing all these problems. They're the one printing gigantic amounts of money, leading to terrible inflation. And the Federal Reserve has taken on hundreds of billions of dollars of debt onto its balance sheet for the American public to pay off. Why should the American public have to pay hundreds of billions of dollars of debt to bail out some guys driving Maseratis on Wall Street? And by the way, all those guys driving Maseratis better learn to drive tractors because in the next 10 years, 20 years, the farmers are going to have the Maseratis and these guys are going to be driving tractors. Let's have a quick listen to this word from Nuria Rubini. It's pretty full on. <laughs> I think that at this point, the government is going to directly take over much more than they've decided in the past, financial institutions. Partial temporary nationalization of the size that has been announced in the United States is not going to be enough. The government is going to have to take over many of these financial institutions and run them, not just give them the right to manage themselves as it is. Just one final comment from Jim Rogers, Chairman of Rogers Holdings. These kind of 
words smack of panic, don't they? Is that partly what got us into this kind of situation? It's smack of insanity. If you ask me, the government's going to run the banking system now. They can't even run the post office. What, what's wrong with these people? Why, are they gonna, why don't they just let them fail? and start over. That's the way the system works. I'll tell you how you'll know when the bottom comes, by the way. When people say it's over and when you see more bad news and stocks stop going down, or when they go up on bad news, that's when we'll hit bottom. When that's going to be, I don't know. Okay, Jim Rogers, thank you very much for joining